Okay, so um, I'm not sure where the other people are, but they aren't going to miss too much because we're going to do an introduction real quick. Um, so my name is Jackie. I am the Teen Services Librarian here at the Teaneck Public Library, and I do all programs for people from fifth grade all the way through 12th grade. I also help with purchasing the book collection at the library, and, um, and I run the volunteer program, so we do a lot of things at the library. And we are happy to be able to welcome Miss Kat from another library across the bridge over from Long Island. Um, Kat is a children's librarian who runs a crochet program for tweens, right? Tweens? Yeah. yeah. Um, and she does a lot of really fine crafty crochet projects. She makes hats and stuffies and loveys and blankets and headbands and pencil cases and all sorts of really fun things. Even more, she recently made a sweater, but I don't see it on screen, so she, I guess she's not wearing it today. <laughs> um, so we are going to be making uh, crochet uh, ear warmers, um, and I hope that everybody was able to pick up their supply kit. And I just want to let you know, today is... Um, really something more for you to just like kind of like watch and learn. You don't have to follow along as Kat is going through. You're going to learn how she makes it. I am recording this session, so don't worry about not um, having it in time. I'm going to have access to the recording later on so that you can follow along to be able to uh, complete your project. So if you're like feel like you're behind, don't worry, everybody else is behind as well, okay? So Kat, take it away. Yes, and that's uh, definitely correct because I'm not going to be crocheting the entire thing. I'm going to start you off and do a few rows and then I have another um, part of the headband that's closer to completion so I can show you how to sew it together. So you'll definitely need to kind of come back to the recording afterwards. So first I'm gonna go through the materials that we need. So you should have already gotten these in your kit. We of course have our yarn and a pair of scissors, your crochet hook, and a sewing needle. So just to give you an idea of the different types of yarn, if you want to crochet anything in the future, the yarn that we're working with, um, this is a chunkier yarn. So this is six ply. So all that means is this one strand is made up of six smaller strands. And to just give you an idea of some other types of yarn, the more commonly used type is four ply. So you can kind of see it's a little bit thinner. And so the weight of our yarn determines the size of the hook we're using. So again, just to give you an idea of different types, this is the hook we'll be using for our thicker yarn today but hooks can be as tiny as this for working with things like lace, and they can be even bigger than what we're working with today. But we have our six millimeter or J hook. I ended up getting six and a half. Oh, okay, that's fine yeah. too. <laughs> um, and I just wanted to point out something and then I won't interrupt you anymore. Um, for every, anybody, if you guys have questions at all, um, It'll be easier for me to just navigate them in the chat box instead of the Q&A. Um, so if you feel free, if you have questions as we're going along, just type them in the chat box and I will kind of like interject and speak to, um, to stop Cat as we're going if you do have questions, okay? Unless I, I know the answer and then I'll just type it. Okay, but I'm gonna turn my camera off so that we, we just watch Cat at this point. So questions, type them away. Go ahead. <laughs> Thanks, Ms. Jackie. All right, so our first step is going to be taking the yarn. So I have the tail end here. So that's the part that's not attached directly to the ball of yarn. And we are going to make what's called a slip knot. So I'm going to just tilt the camera down a little bit so you can see my hands. So we have our tail end on this, my left side. I think it's the right side on camera. And we are going to wrap the yarn around our fingers to create a loop and you want to take the part of the yarn that's closer to your ball and bring just a little piece of that through the loop you just created and then we are going to pull down the tail to tighten that into 
what's called a slip knot. And so this is very adjustable. So I'm gonna pull on one end to make it a little bit smaller. And then we are going to take our hook and put it through that loop that we just made. And so you don't want it to be extraordinarily flush to the hook. You want there to be a little bit of space between the hook and the knot. Because we want these, uh, we're going to be making what's called chain stitches. And we want these to be a little bit loose so that there's a little bit of stretch in the ear warmers so that it fits around, around your head. So in order to make a chain stitch, we are going to be putting the yarn over the hook and pulling the yarn through the loop. So you can hold this part of the yarn. We have our tail dangling down. You can hold this piece, however, is comfortable. I know people hold it in a lot of different ways, but I'll show you how I hold it, what I find most comfortable for me. I put it between my pinky and my ring finger, and then I kind of drape it across my other three fingers here. And I use my thumb and my middle finger to hold my knot. And then my pointer finger is kind of sticking out a little bit to help keep this piece of the yarn nice and taut. And you wanna keep a little tension there so that it makes it really easy to just put the yarn over the hook. And then as I pull it through the loop, I'm twisting the hook towards myself. And as I pull it through the loop, I'm twisting the hook back upwards. So twisting the hook down like that just helps keep the yarn on the hook so that it's not falling off. Because if I tried to just pull it straight through, it's hard to get it through that loop. So you wanna twist it down a little bit. So we are going to be making about 55 chains. You can sort of adjust um, when you get a length that seems good. You can kind of start to wrap it around your head and see if it'll fit. I'll show you as we get there um, what that process looks like. So I'm going to continue to put the yarn over the hook and pull it through. So I'm putting yarn over the hook, twisting that hook towards myself as I pull it through the loop, and twisting the hook back up. Can so you just show that one more time again? <laughs> the yeah, it. yeah. Yeah. So um, let me also show again just how I'm holding it. So I'm wrapping the yarn over my hand like this and using that pointer finger to keep the tension here. And I'm holding the hook um, you know, however you find comfortable, this is how I find it comfortable to hold it when I'm doing the chains is just sort of straight across like this. And so I'm putting the yarn over the hook and I'm pulling that through. And as I pull it through that loop, I'm twisting the hook down and twisting it back up. So the yarn goes over the hook and we pull it through the loop. So like I said, we wanna do this about 55 times. So I'm going to keep doing this for a little bit here. Hope it'll kind of help you get the motion down of how to make a chain. And as you get more chains on your hook, you wanna keep moving your fingers up because if you still try to hold it all the way down here, it's gonna be kind of hard to keep that tension. So you wanna keep your fingers one or two chains down from where you're working. So we're going to keep making our chains. If you need me to slow down at all, let me know. I can slow down and show you the chain stitch again. And it's really important to count your stitches as well. So even if you don't have exactly 55, however many works for 
the size that you want to make, it's really important to count those stitches. And I'm, I'll go through why that is in a little bit, but it's going to pretty much help us keep our rows nice and even and keep a straight edge along the side of our work. All right, so I think this should be about 55. And when you get to a point where you feel like you have enough chains, you can sort of wrap it around your head. And actually I'm a little bit short. So if it doesn't quite fit all the way around, you want to keep going just a little bit. So I'm going to make a few more chains here. So we're wrapping the yarn over and pulling it through the loop. And let's test that again. That's a little bit better. We don't need it to overlap too much just for the two ends to meet. As long as that can get around your head, then you are all set because like I said, it'll be a little bit stretchy. So it doesn't need to be crazy big. So our next step is going to be working back along the chains that we just made. So we are going to be going back and forth to build our piece up. So I'm going to tilt this down again a little bit. So with the chains that we just made, it's a little bit difficult to see on the camera, but if we look at just one of the chains here, you can kind of see that there are three pieces of yarn that make up that one stitch. I know it's a little hard to see on the camera, but when we go back and are doing our next step, you're going to want to put the hook underneath the top two pieces of yarn in that stitch so that you have just one piece of yarn underneath and you have two pieces of yarn on top. And you can let us know in the chat if that doesn't make any sense whatsoever, if it's a little too difficult to see on the video and I will try to do a little bit of a better job showing you as best I can. So for this stitch, the, what we are going to be using is called a half double crochet. So to start, we're going to wrap the yarn around our hook and I'm just using the pointer finger on the hand that's holding the hook to hold that yarn in place. And I'm going to insert the hook into the second chain away from my hook. So we're skipping the first chain, the one that's closest to the hook, and we're going into this second one here. And then I'm going to wrap the yarn around the hook and I'm going to pull it back through that stitch that I just put the hook into. And so now we have three loops on the hook. And so I'm going to put the yarn over the hook again and pull it through all three of those loops. And that's one stitch. So you wanna go into each and every one of the chains that we made doing that exact process. So that's why it's important to count because we are going to count our stitches as we go and make sure that we have, if you made 55 chains, you wanna have 54 stitches since we skipped that first chain. So again, I'm going to put the yarn over the hook and hold that in place as I put the hook into one of my chains. So I have the two pieces of yarn from that chain on top and one piece on the bottom. And I'm gonna put the yarn over the hook again and pull it through that stitch so that we have three loops. And then we're going to yarn over. So we're just putting the yarn over the hook pulling it through all three of those loops. And just like with the chains, we wanna turn the hook toward us a little bit. 
you point it downward and then after you pull it through, you wanna turn the hook back up. So we're going to put the yarn over the hook, go into that next chain, put the yarn over the hook again, pull it back through the hole we just went through. So we have three loops. We are going to put the yarn over the hook again, turn it down toward us as we pull it through those three loops and turn it back upright. And that is the half double crochet stitch. So we are going to continue doing that all the way back across to the beginning. So I'm going to speed up just a little bit here if you need me to slow down and show that stitch again. Again, feel free to let us know. And the first row, if you're having a little bit of trouble on the first row, no matter how experienced of a crocheter you are, the first row is always the most difficult because the chains, there's not a lot of yarn to hold on to at this point. As you build up your rows, it gets a little bit easier to hold the project. So right now it's a little hard to hold on to that yarn and keep it from sort of moving around on you while you're trying to get into those stitches. So if you're having a little bit of trouble with the first row, do not worry, it gets a little bit easier after that. And it's also good to note that you can see it a little bit here. My piece is sort of curving a little bit. It's not perfectly straight. Don't worry if that's happening with yours. That is perfectly normal. It will flatten out as we add more rows. Again, I'm doing yarn over. I'm going into my next stitch. Yarn over. Going through my loops. Again, you wanna keep this, we don't want our stitches to be too, too tight because as we're working back on the second row, we wanna be able to get our hook into those stitches nice and easily. If they're too tight, that's going to be a little bit difficult to do. And you don't want them to be too, too, too loose either, but you do want them to be, to have a little bit of give so that your ear warmers are nice and stretchy. So I can also just show you again that there's a little bit of space here between the hook and the yarn. I don't have it super duper tight and I don't have it crazy loose. We're keeping just a nice little bit amount of space there. I'm doing yarn over, put the hook through the stitch, yarn over and pull it back through, yarn over through all three of our loops. We are coming up to the end here. So again, if you started with 55 chains, we should have 54 stitches. And that just helps keep our edges straight because sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to tell if your last stitch is actually a stitch or if you already finished the row. Sometimes that stitch tends to be a little sneaky and if you skip it, then your uh, your edges just start to, your rows get a little bit shorter. So your edges start to come in a little bit. You don't have that nice straight edge. 
So counting the stitches is very important. Just a few more stitches here. And I also wanna show you actually, just before we get to the end of this row, if you ever make a mistake while you are going along, which happens fairly frequently, again, no matter how experienced you are, it's very easy to fix and crochet. You can just take your hook out of that loop, take your working piece of yarn, the one that is attached to the ball that you're working with, and you just pull and your stitches come right out. And then you can just put your hook back through that loop and continue working. One of the things I love about crochet is it's very, very easy to go back and correct those mistakes. All right, so I have my last stitch here. So once we finish that final stitch, before we turn around and go back in the other direction, we want to make just one more chain stitch here. You want to do that at the end of every single row because the stitches that we're doing are a little bit taller than a normal single crochet. So adding that chain just starts us off at a little bit of a taller height than just turning around and going without doing that chain. So again, you want to wrap the yarn over the hook and pull it through that loop, turning the hook towards you as you go through. And then we are going to turn our piece around so that the longest part of the piece is should be on your left side if you're right-handed and on your right side if you're left-handed. And for the rest of our rows, we are going to be doing the same stitch but we are going to be doing it slightly differently. So if you can see the tops of the stitches here, so I'm holding my piece so you can see the top of those stitches that we just made, you can see there are two pieces of yarn on the top of each of those stitches. So for this row, you want to go through, put your hook through the piece of yarn that is furthest from you. So that's called the back loop because it's the loop in the back. So you're going to be going through just that instead of normally we would be going through or underneath both of those. But for this, we wanna go just through that back loop. So we are still going to be wrapping our yarn over our hook at the start of the stitch. And then we are going to be going into that back loop. We're going to wrap our yarn again and pull it back through that loop that we just went through. So that we end up still with three loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. And so what this is going to do is give us a sort of ridged look and I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. So again, we are going to yarn over, go through just that back loop, that second piece of yarn furthest from you, yarn over, pull it back through that, that loop, and then yarn over and pull through all three of our loops. And you wanna do this going all the way back across Again, counting those stitches to make sure you have the same number of stitches that you had on your first row. And again, if your piece is curling in a little bit, it's not lying completely flat, it will straighten itself out a little bit as we add more rows totally normal for it to do that for the first few rows.
So we are almost done with the second row here. And then I'll just show you how to turn around again and start that third row. And then we are going to jump ahead a little bit and I'll show you how we're going to put the final piece together. So I'm coming up on my last couple of stitches here. So again, when it comes to the last piece, if I weren't counting my stitches, I would think that I was done here because it sort of looks, it's a little hard to see, but it sort of looks like that edge is straight, but I do still have one more stitch hiding out down here. So I wanna make sure that I go into that last stitch. so that I get a nice straight edge here. And then again, we are going to do one more chain stitch. So we are going to go yarn over, turn that hook down towards you, pull it through the loop. And then we are going to turn our piece around and go back in the other direction. So we're just working back and forth along here to build up the height of our piece. So again, you want to look at the top of your stitches and see those two pieces of yarn. And again, we are going to be going into the loop that is further from us, so that back loop. We wanna put our hook only through that loop. So we'll put the yarn over the hook and put the hook through that back loop, yarn over, pull the yarn back through that loop. So we have three loops on our hook now. Put the yarn over the hook and pull it through all three of those loops. So you wanna do that going all the way back across. And so going through just those back loops instead of both of those loops that I showed you is going to give us this sort of ridged look instead of just a, a flat piece, everything all the same um, sort of texture. This just gives us a little bit of a more fun design here. So you wanna repeat the rows that I showed you going into that back loop only all the way across. You wanna do that until you have 10 rows. And that includes the first row that we did of regular half double crochet. And then you have nine rows of the back loop only. And so when we get to the end of our piece here, so this is our final stitch on that 10th row, you want to cut the yarn so that it's no longer attached to the ball of yarn. And you want to leave a nice long piece because we are going to use that to sew this edge together to the other side. But before we do that, we need to fasten off the piece that we made. So we're going to create a knot so that this doesn't come undone. So in order to do that, I'm going to, again, create that tension here, take my hook, put the yarn over the hook, pull it through that loop, and then I'm going to do, continue pulling it through until it comes all the way through. And then I'm going to just tug that a little bit and that creates a knot. So that, that does not come undone. It just holds our piece securely in place. So the next thing I am going to do is take the tail end of the yarn that I was just working with where we just created our knot to finish off the piece. I'm gonna take the end of that piece of yarn 
and I'm going to twist it a little bit because I want to make that a little bit smaller, compact it a little bit so that it fits through the eye of our needle. So I'm going to thread that through it may be a little bit difficult because the yarn is a little bit chunkier. But you should be able to pull it through. And then I'm actually going to put the needle aside for now and set this up so that we can sew it. So you want to take your finished piece and fold it in half lengthwise. And then you are going to take one end of this, doesn't matter which end, and twist it. And then we wanna bring the two sides together. And you are going to sandwich these two pieces. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So we have our two folded ends and you want to tuck one end inside of the other so that we get four pieces layered on top of each other. I'm going to just line those up a little bit better. And then we are going to pick our needle back up. And because we already have the knot from where we fastened off, we don't need to create a knot for this because it's attached already to here. And you are going to take the needle and push it through all four of those layers of yarn. So you're gonna push it through and then just pull it out the other side and tug until you can't pull it through anymore. And then you're just going to take the needle and go from the top to the bottom this time and pull it through until it's nice and tight. And you are going to just keep doing that. Going up and down until you get to the other side and make sure that you're going through all four of those pieces of yarn because we wanna make sure all of those are nice and secure. And you're gonna just work up and down and up and down from one side to the other. And then when we get to the end, you just want to create a knot to secure those stitches that we just made. So in order to do that, I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to slip it underneath one of the stitches from the crocheted piece. And I'm going to pull that through until I have a little loop here. And I'm going to put the needle through the loop and then just pull it down. And that creates a nice secure knot to hold our stitches in place. And then our final step here is going to be, we still have our yarn attached to our needle and we are going to take the needle and weave it under some of our stitches here. And this is gonna be the inside of the headband. So nobody will see this part and we are going to just pull the yarn through those stitches. So this is called weaving in the ends of the piece. And this is just so the yarn stays a little more secure. It sort of helps hold things in place even though we do have our knot doing that. We always just weave in these ends to help make it even more secure and less likely that those knots will come undone. So I'm just going underneath some of these stitches. You can do this as many times as you want, but you don't need to 
keep going until all of your yarn is gone, you can take your scissors and just snip where you finished. So I'm just gonna cut that excess yarn off. And then I still have the tail from where we began. So I'm going to take my needle and just do the same thing. I'm going to weave in those ends. So I'm twisting my yarn here so that it's a little easier to get through the eye of the needle. And then I am just putting that needle under some of these stitches here and pulling that tail through those stitches. So I'm gonna do that just a couple of times and then I can remove my needle and just snip off that excess yarn. Just be careful that you don't cut the part that you crocheted because that would not be good. And so then our final step, like I said, this is the inside of the ear warmer. Our final step is just to turn it inside out. And you can see because of how we layered those different, those two ends that we have a nice twist in the front here. And so then you can put it on, stretch it out a little bit. I wasn't counting my chains, so uh, it does fit. And then you have a brand new ear warmer that you made yourself. So hopefully that all made sense. <laughs> and if you guys have any questions, let me know. I can clarify any of that. I know it's a little difficult to see on the video, but hopefully it wasn't too bad. Yeah, do you guys have any questions? Um, you can feel free to type it in um, in the chat. Uh, while Miss Cat was doing the tutorial, I went ahead and crocheted this. My nose cat ears. <laughs> Not really. She made these a while ago. Um, but this is a little different, but it's the same pattern, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I didn't do the back loop only, so you can see that it doesn't have those ridges. Mm-hmm. So it, it just makes it a little flatter, but yeah, basically the same pattern. Is there a way, um, is the, are the cat ears just um, done separately and then you add them on? Yeah, so those are triangles that I did the blue and the white separately, sewed those two pieces together and then I sewed them onto mm -hmm. the headband. Is, does anybody like the cat ears? Because if you do, you can type that in the chat and maybe, um, Maybe Kat will send a cat will send us instructions on how to make the cat ears too as an additional uh, step. So let us know. What do you mean um, by how do? There's a question that says how do. Still thinking, still typing. Oh, how do you start the third row? So the third row is going to be the same way we started the second row. So you want to just do that chain one and then you're going to flip the piece around and you're going to go back and do the exact same thing we did for the second row. So you want to just do the yarn over, put the hook through the back loop, yarn over again, pull the hook back through the loop that you just went through and then you'll have three loops on your hook and you want to yarn over and pull through those three loops. Does so that, that does, yeah, does that make okay. sense? Okay. And don't forget, guys, um, we will have the recording available to keep on uh, checking. Yes, absolutely. Um, so usually it takes me a little while, so I probably won't be able to send it until tomorrow um, just because it, it uploads for quite a while afterward. Um, but I will be able to send it. I'm going to be posting it um, onto YouTube and then sending you a direct link to all of your email addresses. Everybody's going to get the recording afterward. And even with the instructions and recording, if you still have questions, um, everybody should have my email address. So definitely feel free to email me afterward if you have questions. And I can always reach out to Kat if I don't know the answer. Um, I, and I just wanted to check, did everybody understand the knot part? Because I know sometimes the knot can be confusing for people too. Did it not make sense? Or did it not, not make sense? <laughs> Yeah, I can go over that again. Okay. Um, well, nobody's saying anything, so I think we're okay for now. Um, cool.
I think that the project's going to be cool. And I, I, I was really wondering how you were going to get the twisted look. I was so curious how that works. So it blew my mind when you showed us at the end. I was like, wow, you sandwich it together. I, I was like, when you started twisting, I was like, oh, what is she doing? And then I was like, oh, yeah. Very cool. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot simpler than it looks. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, it is a lot simpler. Um, okay, so we are basically done if nobody has any questions. I do want to point out to everybody, um, anybody who is in high school, I do have a program coming up right now with Stand Out for College in a couple weeks. Um, it's going to be on uh, Wednesday, uh, March 17th, and that is a college prep program. It's specifically geared to talk about the college application process and how it's changed as a result of COVID-19 and everything that people will need to know. So it's really pertinent, especially for like high school freshmen, sophomore, and juniors. Um, you might think it might be a little too early to start thinking about that, but it's actually pertinent right now because they're gonna be talking about things that you can start doing right now that's gonna help you in the next couple of years when you start applying um, for schools. And also like, how do you start looking for schools when you can't go to them or um, all sorts of things and, and where scholarships will be when so many things are getting cut for financial aid and stuff. So they'll be talking about all sorts of things like that. I'm going to be putting, I'm putting the, um, the registration link right in the chat. Um, let me see. So I just put it right in the chat for everybody. Oh, I don't think you guys saw it. <laughs> um, and if you're interested, just feel free to register. Or if you have any more questions about it, you can email me later on as well. And if you have older siblings that are in high school, that would be good for them to know as well. Okay. All right, guys. Well, if that's it, have a great night. Thank you, Miss Cat. Thank you. <laughs> good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.